Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of a Coding Blocks video. And this video, the idea was triggered based off some tips that Jay Z threw out in episode 225, where we were talking about things that worked for us in 2023 and things that we want to do more of in 2024 and all that. And we're all fans of, or I guess Jay Z and I definitely use Obsidian a lot. And he kind of gave some ideas of things, how he stays organized and how he finds things and is able to look back on notes that he takes. So I wanted to share those so that you could visually see what he had mentioned on the podcast, because these are just great little tips to be able to get more functionality and usability out of this little tool, which is fantastic. So if you haven't heard of Obsidian before, it's just, it's a note taker type app that you can use Markdown in. So it's really quick to do shorthand type stuff. So if you don't have it, go to obsidian.md and then download it from there. It's a really small download. It comes in really quick. So, you know, it shouldn't be too bad to get up and rolling. Now, once you have it, when you install it, you're going to get a different screen than this. I'm impatient. I click to get started or quick start or whatever. And so it takes you to this screen, which is basically like, oh, well, here you go. So let me, let me step you through just a couple of things so you have an idea of what's going on here. So this says Obsidian Vault. That may not mean anything to you if you're brand new to this. So if you click this thing right here to open, open this vault window, you actually, this is similar to what you get when you first install it. So create a new vault, open folder as vault, or open from Obsidian Sync. All a vault is is a folder where your files go. That's That's it. So... You know, as long as you can correlate those two things in your mind, you'll be fine. In this case, it created me a default one when I did that quick start called Obsidian Vault in my documents folder. And I'll show you that. So if I go to documents, you'll see Obsidian Vault. So that's what it did by default because I clicked the quick start button. Now, what I'm going to do is maybe I don't want to put anything there. Or maybe I want to have specific vaults for different types of things, right? So I'm a developer. Let's, let's do a developer vault. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to say browse and I want to do it in my document. So let's hit select there and I'm going to create. All right. Now it's going to automatically open it up. Now what you probably may have seen real quick is it didn't close my other one. It kept them both open, right? So I'm going to close this one down. I don't really need it right now, but so they give you a little screen here and they give you this graph view and I may or may not have seen this when this first happened. I'm really quick at just getting rid of stuff. <laughs> like I'm, I like to just start working. So one of the things I want to show you, I want to show you a few things that Jay-Z got started with or was telling us about on the podcast. So he mentioned that he likes to take notes every day. Like he'll have a new file every day. Well, lo and behold, they have a button for this open today's daily note. And when you do that, this actually does another one of his tips, which is always have a date in here that you're working on. And the reason is, at least for us developers, is we can sort of like remember, oh, I did that back in January, right? And so it's real easy to go back and, and skim through your notes from that period and say, okay, this is what I have, right? So that was one of his tips. And just by clicking that, it automatically opens that and does that. Well, Another tip that he gave that I didn't know that Obsidian did is linking or creating uh, tags for this type thing. So check this out. Let, let me say that I did something like I did some sort of Mongo script, right? So maybe, uh, I don't know, let's call it Mongo config, right? I don't know, whatever. It doesn't really matter. But now that I did that, he might want to. you might want to tag this with MongoDB. Right. And maybe you also want to tag it with, I don't know, scripts. And for whatever reason, this one didn't tag right. And I think it's because I'm not on a line that's by itself. So let me do Pal Mongo DB here. So now I've actually introduced two tags into the Obsidian vault that it's now aware of, which is really cool. And Let's say, just for sake, so that we have a little bit more data to work with, I'm going to create another one. I'm going to say Mongo stuff. And, you know, if we kept with what Jay-Z was saying before, uh, let's say that we had this on here. And we're going to say we did this 2023, 12. Uh, let's hope it was earlier in the month so you weren't working when Christmas rolled around or whatever. 
so you got Mongo stuff, right? And uh, let's say did some fantastic things in Mongo. And, you know, again, this is one of the really beautiful things about this. So check this out. Right now, I'm in, I'm in editing view. I'm going to control click this to open this to the right. And this one is currently in viewing mode, right? So I can do, I can do all kinds of markdown things over here and they're just going to show up on the right. So here's an example of things rendering. And if I come up here, Let's get rid of that. Let's do this for a heading, right? So you can see the markdown over here, but over here you're actually going to get the representation of what it was, which is really nice, especially when you're trying to just, you know, you want to be able to look at the things over here and be able to do things over here at the same time. Now, another thing that I love about Obsidian is it works really well with emojis because more or less it's just another font, right? So on Windows, it's Windows in the period, and I can put any kind of emojis on, in here I want, right? Like, did something really cool, right? So that's awesome. But more, more often than not, what I'll find myself doing is I'll have like little checklists. Like, yep, finished this. Or still working on something else, right? Or... Uh, another thing that I think I saw Joe, Joe Zach do at one point is he had something that was like, you know, Hey, this is important. Need to get this done. Uh, another thing like maybe here, I'm going to say, Oh, check it out because I did, because I've already introduced those tags before I can quickly go to them and I'm going to say, well, this is MongoDB, but I'm also going to create another one and say that this is maybe, um, a to do, right? Something like that. And so now what you've got is you can come down here and click this and check it out. It automatically does a search for you for to do's and I only have one document, but if I click on MongoDB, look, it shows me the two documents that I've tagged with this, which is absolutely fantastic. Now to take it even a step further, there's that thing that I closed just a little while ago. That's this graph view and check this. So right now it just kind of has all my documents laying around. But let's say that I want to view this a little bit different. Right now it's showing me orphans. If I get rid of that, there's no orphans laying around, right? So these things aren't linked to anything on this graph right now. But if I do tags, check this out. Now I can see, okay, to do is only linked to one document here. However, MongoDB is linked to both of these things. And if you click on them on here, again, it does a search for you. So you can filter down and find these things super fast. So it's a way to be super efficient to be able to go back and find things, especially the fact that when you're in your notes and you do a hashtag or, or a pound sign, it automatically gives you a list of the things you've already done. So it helps you stay consistent while you're doing these things. And then one other thing that I want to point out, and it's funny coming from me because uh, if you ever saw my email folder, probably many people would puke because I treat my email like it's a search engine. I, I don't put things in folders. It's, to me, it's a waste of time. But when I'm in here doing things, I definitely do. So I'll create a folder and I might call this projects, right? And for instance, I've got one right now that I'm working on a presentation and it is data streaming and real-time analytics. So maybe I drop that stuff in there, right? And and I'll do the other things down here too, right? So I'll, I'll end up having things like works in progress or, or you know, any number of things. But the, again, the beauty is now, because you name things a particular way, if I go do a Control-Shift-F or on Mac a Command-Shift-F, and instead of this, let's say I say 2401, now I can go see all my notes that had this in here, right? And just as a kick, let's put 2023-12-01 did some interesting things. Now, a beautiful thing is, like he said, as he's working on something, he'll put the date on it of when he did it. 
so that if he needs to go back and find these later, he can do 2023, 20, 12, and check it out. So now I've got these three documents that show up. This one that was in the in the header, but this other one, it's down in the notes so you can find these things, right? So if you want to organize your notes and organize your ideas in ways that allow you to quickly get back to them in the future, use these tags, use the dates, and you'll be able to do some things that are real nice. And then the one last thing I want to leave you with on this, because this really, I mean, it's a fantastic little tool. Another thing is they have this command palette over here. And I wanted to share this because you have things where you can pin things on here, right? Uh, not even completely sure what that does. I think it would just keep it open. But more or less, if you hit this command, ta uh, this command palette button over here, which I think is also control shift P I think it's the same thing as visual studio code and a number of other editors out there, but you can actually look at the other things that this thing has available. Export to PDF. Sounds pretty nice. Uh, what else we got? Go to tab one, blah. Some of these are cool. Use dark mode. I kept this in light mode just for this video because it's easier to see uh, when you're looking at this on a phone or whatever. But uh, like one down here, I think they had something about uh, or was it something about templates? I don't even remember where it was. I, I can't, I can't find it right now, but I, I guess I could type it. So yeah, insert template, insert current date, insert current time. So there's all kinds of things in these command palettes that, that you could probably learn how to do things even cooler than what I've already showed you. Right. So, you know, definitely, definitely, definitely go take a look at, at obsidian if you haven't already and i highly recommend using it as sort of like your daily task thing like what you're working on because it's a really nice place to go get these things and what i do love about it is if you take this and you were to go for whatever reason and you were to go put this into something like uh i don't know if i have word installed i have wordpad installed that's good enough uh it usually formats better than that but um yeah anyways this is a this is an excellent way to keep track of the things that you think are important that you're working on. So with that, I'm Alan Underwood. Appreciate it. If you haven't listened to the podcast, definitely go check it out. It's an iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify. It's it's all over the place. It's called Coding Blocks. And if you enjoyed this, leave us a thumbs up and uh, subscribe to the channel. And hopefully, we'll be doing a little bit more of this here in 2024, trying to trying to get the new year off to a good good start here. So thanks everybody, and uh, see you, or maybe you'll see me next time. Thank you.